Once again, Harbor Freight releases yet another line of affordable products, this time turning their headlights towards high-end off-road lighting at a price point that outshines the competition. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. In this episode, we are checking out the brand new RoadShock Edge lights from Harbor Freight. We're back from King of the Hammers and I wanna share these upcoming lights with you guys. Check them out up close, see how they work, and overall, just give you guys a review on these brand new lights. Now, Harbor Freight has been absolutely killing it with all of these new products geared towards the off-road market. They started out with their Badland Apex winch, which is a 12,000 pound synthetic winch at a industry leading price point. And they actually work really, really good. They've created a bunch of recovery gear, soft shackles, snatch blocks, hard shackles, toe straps, the list goes on. They also came out with the Badland ZXR winch, which is even cheaper than that. Then most of you guys know, they also came out with the Badland floor jack, off-road jack to be more specific and now they are dabbling into the off-road lighting segment now all of these products are much cheaper and much more affordable than some of the higher end products that we've only known in the past and at first when harbor freight started releasing these products a lot of people you know kind of immediately assumed that they were junk they weren't going to work but after all of these products have slowly been out there in the wild for the past couple years people hopefully are starting to realize that these products are actually pretty good they do work and the price point makes it really hard to beat now these lights are going to be offered in two different models a six led and a four led the six is naturally going to be a little bit larger the four is a little bit smaller and of course not as bright but they are sold individually so let's go ahead and check out what comes in a box so we're going to be taking a look at the six LED, which is a spot and flood combo. There's really no option to change that. They are what they are and they offer it like this. We get a black lens cover, an amber lens cover, a wiring plug pigtail, our bracket, mounting hardware, and of course the light itself. As you can tell, our little flood lenses are right there and the rest are spotlights. So there's six LEDs that actually project forward and three side shooter lights on each side, which is very, very handy for off-road lighting. This puts out 7,500 lumens, according to the box, and both the four LED and six LED models come with three different light modes, a backlight, a low beam, and a high beam as well. Pretty easy to wire up, and we'll get to that here in a little bit because we're gonna be installing these two on the truck, little tow rig right there, so we can take them out and test them I would love to take out the race Jeep and test it, show you guys how they do off-road. However, we still have to uh, kind of fix it up from King of the Hammers before we take it out there. Now the four LED models are offered in both spot and fog combo, as well as spot only. Whereas the six LED are only offered as a spot fog combo, as you can see here. So when you're moving up to a six LED light, those two extra LEDs opposed to the four might as well be used for a flood pattern to just give you a little bit better of a light output. Now, before I get started on the install, let's talk about pricing because I know that's what a lot of you guys ultimately want to hear. These six LED lights are going to be offered at $149.99, which means $150 each, $300 for a pair. The four LEDs are $99 each, so both the spot and flood combo as well as the spots, 99 bucks, meaning this entire setup would actually be cheaper than just two Baja Design LP6s on the front. Now what I don't want to happen is turn this video into a comparison video between RoadShock and Baja Designs, but if you haven't noticed yet, they are very familiar in design. And I actually have a set right here of Baja Design LP6s. I know a lot of people are gonna say that if you want the utmost highest quality, go with Baja Designs. And I've said the same thing in the past. They are very good lights. They put out a ton of lighting, very well spread. But unfortunately, a couple years later, this is probably four years, they've already started having quite a bit of pitting inside of the LEDs themselves. A lot of corrosion down here on the base. And I've tried in the past to take these apart, but unfortunately there's just too much Loctite on there that the screws started to strip, strip out. You can't put too much heat in them. So if the quality was there, it would reflect it. And I would think they'd last a little bit longer than four years, especially at the price tag where these are around $500 a piece. Now the design, they are very similar as you can tell. You know, there's 
A few differences between the two, but the overall styling is very similar. The housing itself is a little smaller. The LED size actually looks about the same. The road shock, we have the backlight in the middle, opposed to the Baja Designs having the backlight on the bottom. We don't have the cooling fins like the Baja Designs do, but overall it's a very similar shape, very similar look, and from what I've seen, it's actually a very similar output. Now, since we are talking about Baja Designs, there's one thing I do wanna show you on the set on the Gladiator. And that's just how the lens has held up. There's quite a bit of delamination happening. You can kind of see it, these aren't rock chips. It's actually kind of the, the lens just delaminating from itself. So that is about all of the comparison we will be doing between the two. But that's one thing I do like about these road shock lights is that they come with covers. So if we do want to prevent that from happening, debris hitting the lenses, we can run the cover. If you're not a fan of amber, you can just pop this out and have a, a, a white light. If you like amber, throw the amber lens on. If you live in a state where you have to have your lights covered, they come with a black cover as well. So for 300 bucks, a set of these is much more manageable. And even if we do break them, we're not out a crap ton of money and I'm sure they are going to have a phenomenal warranty or an extra warranty offered by Harbor Freight, just like all of their other products. With all of that being said, let's go ahead and get these installed and wired up so you can test them out tonight. Now these lights and brackets actually have provisions for three mounting hardware bolts on the bracket itself. Definitely something I would do on an off-road vehicle, something that's gonna see a lot of vibration, a lot of impact. Having those three in there is really gonna make sure these lights are nice and secure. But on the Ford Super Duty, we'll probably be fine with just the one single bolt. So last night, finished up designing and making this light bar, <laughs> I guess if we wanna call it that. But I decided to make this, it looks a lot cleaner than just drilling a few holes in the bumper. And I had to space these out so we could eventually add a third light in the middle if we want. Forgot how big these front ends are and it really just swallows up this light and makes it look tiny. When in reality, these things are fairly big. So let's go ahead and get this last one installed on the bumper bar. Now that we have the lights mounted, that's kind of the easy part, it's time to take a look at the wiring, which also can be very, very simple, but I know a lot of people have questions in regard to automotive wiring, especially when it comes to a low beam and high beam circuit. I will go ahead and say it's very, very important that you do not send 12 volts to both the low beams and the high beams at the same time because it will fry the lights. Now, luckily, Harbor Freight does make it pretty simple with their new off-road light wiring harness, which is practically plug and play for these lights. We get a double throw switch, high beam off low beam, a relay comes fused, a power lead and our two waterproof Deutsch connectors that plug directly into the light. Now, for those of you who do want to make our own wiring harness, the lights come with, once again, the waterproof Deutsch connectors and unterminated ends. The red is the low beams, white is high beam, yellow is backlight, and black is naturally ground. So there are quite a few people who have vehicles with aftermarket switch systems 
Or in my case, if you have like a Ford or a Jeep, you can get them with aux switches that are pre-wired, pre-relayed from the factory. You just hook up power to whatever you want to power, flip the switch and it turns on. Now, if you do want to make your own wiring harness, it's important to make a relay to pretty much not allow you to send power to the low beams and high beams at the same time. So here on the board, for those of you who don't want to use a wiring harness from Harbor Freight and make your own wiring harness, this is how you prevent both switches from being activated at the same time with one single relay. So you have to grab a five pole relay, which means it has five poles sticking out the back of it. They're all labeled, so it should be pretty easy to reference this if you ever need to get, go back and, and look at it. So our switch number one is going to 30, switch number two is going to 85, 86 is going to a chassis ground, 87A and 87 are going to our two functions. I put function up here because you can wire it up uh, for function one could be a low beam or high beam, function two could be high beam or low beam, depending on how you want your switches set up. What this relay is, 87A, which is in the middle right here, is normally closed, 87 is normally open. So I have a little note down here saying nothing works without 12 volts on 30. So 30 is going to be our first switch. So our first switch is going to energize the relay and it's going to power 87A because that's a normally closed circuit. Our 85 is our trigger wire, which actually changes it from 87A up to 87. If we have switch one, let's say that's our low beams, whenever we flip our switch one, it's going to power 87A, which is function one. Now, switch one has to remain on. If we want to switch over to our high beams with switch one on, which is the low beams, we hit switch number two, which is going to turn off 87A and turn on function number two coming out of 87, which would be our high beams. So hopefully that makes sense. If you follow this schematic right here, this little drawing, you'll be good to go. There's no way that the low and high beams will turn on at the same time. And all of that is being done with a single relay. I don't know what else to say, guys. Pretty simple. Let's get these wired up. Now to make it easy, I'm just gonna use the pigtail from the wiring harness kit and cut it right after the relay. Time to go ahead and test out the lights. So hopefully everything works. It looked like everything worked. Now I did realize there is another really cool way to wire these up using only one switch, same relay setup. Let me go show you on the board real quick. Instead of having two switches, have your first switch turn on the low beams going to 30. Now instead of having a second switch, tie 85 into your high beam circuit that way, whenever switch one is on and you're off-roading, you have your lights on, all you have to do to turn on your high beams on the road shock lights or your auxiliary lights would be turn on your vehicle high beams, which would then kick on function two, being the high beams to the lights. Well, with all of that being said, now we just have to wait, kill some time, and wait till it's dark outside. We're ready to test the lights out. We got the whole crew up here. Ellie and Emma are ready to help out. So before we turn these lights on, let's take a look at what we're looking at. We are up in the field and these are the factory Ford headlights, which are actually surprisingly good. The GoPro does throw the lighting off a little bit. Let's go ahead and hit switch number one, girls. So right off the bat, as you can tell, the side shooters send out a, it's a drastic line right off to the side. Turn the light off again. An amazing difference right off the bat. So go ahead and put switch number one back on and then hit switch number two, which is gonna be the high beams. So we're gonna to have to take it out in a little bit, get to an open road and see how far these lights actually go. But the high beams, really the only area those make a change is directly in the line of where those are. We're about to uh, <laughs> throw the amber lenses on and see how much of a difference the amber lens makes. But all right, go ahead and hit them. 
Yep, those are bright. It looks like a full light bar. <laughs> that is extremely bright. So what do you girls think about them? Initial reviews. Do you think they're pretty bright? Yeah. Right, so we're gonna go ahead and pop on the amber lens covers. See what those look like. You wanna pop it on? Uh -huh. So you gotta put the words straight. Put it on, put it all the way on. All right, let's go back up and check those. Okay. Emma, hit switch number two. I am personally a fan of the amber. Not only do I like how they look on the vehicle, but also how they put out the light. It's a much uh, easier light to see. All right, so we're back to headlights. Emma, go ahead and hit switch number one. Hit switch number one. Yep, puts out pretty much the same amount of light, but a different shade. It's easier to see. In my mind, when you're off-roading, you can see different levels of the terrain a little bit better. Just the color of the wavelength changes a little bit. You are gonna lose out a little bit on the distance with the amber, but how it kind of portrays the terrain, in my mind, is better with amber. Now, I know that I said we weren't gonna make this a comparison, but I am interested to see how these compare to the Baja design. So Cassie is pulling up the Gladiator. I wired these up to be high beam only, so we are gonna have to hit all right, Emma, hit switch number two. It's hard to tell. I mean, yeah, and Emma has her high beams on. I think, I think the, the, I think when I set these up, I angled them both to have that center high beam in the same spot, opposed to two different spots. But I'm gonna stand in front of them both, leave the high beams on, and I'm just gonna see if I can see a difference between them both. They're both really bright. I will say it, I think the uh, I think the Baja designs are a little bit brighter, but I would hope they would be at a, you know, $900 for two opposed to 300. Both of them? Okay, and then turn yours on. Yeah. All right, turn yours off. Emma, turn yours on. These definitely put more light out to the side opposed to the Baja designs. I will say that. We have ample coverage all the way right beside the light, almost 90 degrees. Oh yeah, we are getting some, uh, some wind here. As you can tell on the Baja designs, they don't come out directly to the side and having those side lights right there is very nice for off-roading. Cassie, turn yours off. Yeah, that's a that's a huge difference in how well they, they spread directly out to the side. And last but not least, it's time to do some back road testing. I've never had good experience really capturing the light output on camera. But the one thing I can tell you is the amount of coverage is about equal to my current headlights on the F-250 but it really does enhance the lighting of the road. Might be a little hard to see on the camera, but it does. So this is low beams and there we have our high beams and we are coming up on some very odd property here. So we're gonna turn around here in a minute. This is about as far as I'm gonna take the truck down, but as you can tell, high beams do go out pretty far. That's a good distance down that, uh, hey, I'm gonna call it a trail. It goes to the middle of nowhere. But let's go back to just low beams. Those are our factory Ford high beams paired with the amber lights on low and then on high. Pretty impressive. So hopefully you're able to tell from the video the GoPro never does it justice, but these lights they are impressive, especially at the price point, 150 each for the six LED and 99 for the four. That's one thing I didn't talk about. I wish we could have uh, you know, done some testing on the four inch LEDs, but from what I saw out at King of the Hammers, the four inches do phenomenal. You know, Of course, they're not gonna be as bright, but they operate just the same. Very, very good spread. These things are impressive. The side shooters really kick them out, as you could tell from the footage. And like I just mentioned, the price point, these are kind of a no-brainer. Having that good look, 
having a backlight, having a low beam and a high beam, they really hit all the marks that people are looking for in an off-road light. Now, one thing I did not mention, these are for off-road use only. They are not street legal. Now, I am running them as headlights on this Jeep, but this is a race Jeep. It's not a street-driven Jeep and I'm sure we'd get pulled over pretty quick. One thing I did not mention is the amp draw on these. Hate to say it, but I forgot, and I actually threw away the instructions that had it listed. I want to say they're somewhere around 7.5 amps or 9.5. Either way, I know that a set of two is less than 20 amps because I have them hooked up to my uh, Switch Pros unit. So under 20 amps or at least under 10 amps each and that's on high beam so you should be safe for most electrical circuits pretty easy to wire up they look good hopefully you guys enjoyed the video look for them early march at harbor freight and i'll see you guys in the next video